Robert Louis Stevenson Precy and the Marionettes We made Precy about sundown. The plain is rich with tufts of poplar. In a wide, luminous curve, the oisey lay under the hillside. A faint mist began to rise and confound the different distances together. There was not a sound audible but that of the sheep bells in some meadow by the river, and the creaking of a cart down the long road that descends the hill. The villas in their gardens, the shops along the street, all seemed to have been deserted the day before, and I felt inclined to walk discreetly as one feels in a silent forest. All of a sudden we came round a corner, and there, in a little green round the church, was a bevy of girls in Parisian costumes playing croquet. Their laughter and the hollow sound of ball and mallet made a cheery stir in the neighborhood, and the look of these slim figures, all corseted and ribboned, produced an answerable disturbance in our hearts. We were within a sniff of Paris, it seemed, and here were females of our own species playing croquet, just as if Precy had been a place in real life instead of a stage in the fairyland of travel. For, to be frank, the peasant woman is scarcely to be counted as a woman at all, and after having passed by such a succession of people in petticoats, digging and hoeing and making dinner, this company of coquettes under arms made quite a surprising feature in the landscape, and convinced us at once of being fallible males. The inn at Precy is the worst inn in France. Not even in Scotland have I found worse fare. It was kept by a brother and sister, neither of whom was out of their teens. The sister, so to speak, prepared a meal for us, and the brother, who had been tippling, came in and brought with him a tipsy butcher to entertain us as we ate. We found pieces of the loo warm pork among the salad, and pieces of unknown yielding substance in the ragout. The butcher entertained us with pictures of Parisian life, with which he professed himself well acquainted, the brother sitting the while on the edge of the billiard table toppling precariously and sucking the stump of a cigar in the midst of these diversions bang went a drum past the house and a hoarse voice began issuing a proclamation it was a man with marionettes announcing a performance for that evening he had set up his caravan and lighted his candles on another part of the girl's croquet green under one of those open sheds which are so common in france to shelter markets and he and his wife by the time we strolled up there were trying to keep order with the audience it was the most absurd contention the show people had set out a certain number of benches and all who sat upon them were to pay a couple of sous for the accommodation they were always quite full, a bumper house, as long as nothing was going forward, but let the showwoman appear with an eye to a collection, and at the first rattle of her tambourine the audience slipped off the seats and stood round on the outside with their hands in their pockets. It certainly would have tried an angel's temper. The showman roared from the proscenium. He had been all over France, and nowhere, nowhere, not even on the borders of Germany, had he met with such misconduct such thieves and rogues and rascals as he called them and every now and again the wife issued on another round and added her shrill quota to the tirade i remarked here as elsewhere how far more copious is the female mind in the material of insult the audience laughed in high good humor over the man's declamations, but they bridled and cried aloud under the woman's pungent sallies she picked out the sore points she had the honor of the village at her mercy voices answered her angrily out of the crowd and received a smarting retort for their trouble a couple of old ladies beside me who had duly paid for their seats waxed very red and indignant and discoursed to each other audibly about the impudence of these mountebanks but as soon as the showwoman caught a whisper of this she was down upon them with a swoop if mesdames could persuade their neighbors to act with common honesty the mountebanks she assured them would be polite enough miss doms had probably had their bowl of soup and perhaps a glass of wine that evening the montebanks also had a taste for soup and did not choose to have their little earnings stolen from them before their eyes once things came as far as a brief personal encounter between the showman and some lads in which the former went down as readily as one of his own marionettes to a peal of jeering laughter I was a good deal astonished at this scene, because I am pretty well acquainted with the ways of French strollers, more or less artistic, and have always found them singularly pleasing. Any stroller must be dear to the right-thinking heart, if it were only as a living protest against offices and the mercantile spirit, and as something to remind us that life is not by necessity the kind of thing we generally make it. 
even a german band if you see it leaving town in the early morning for a campaign in country places among trees and meadows has a romantic flavor for the imagination there is nobody under thirty so dead but his heart will stir a little at sight of a gypsy's camp we are not cotton spinners at all or at least not all through there is some life in humanity yet and youth will now and again find a brave word to say in dispraise of riches and throw up a situation to go strolling with a knapsack an englishman has always special facilities for intercourse with french gymnasts for england is the natural home of gymnasts this or that fellow in his tights and spangles is sure to know a word or two of english to have drunk english aff and aff and perhaps performed in an english music hall he is a countryman of mine by profession he leaps like the belgian boating men to the notion that i must be an athlete myself but the gymnast is not my favorite he has little or no tincture of the artist in his composition his soul is small and pedestrian for the most part since his profession makes no call upon it and does not accustom him to high ideas but if a man is only so much of an actor that he can stumble through a farce he is made free of a new order of thoughts he has something else to think about beside the money-box he has a pride of his own and what is of far more importance he has an aim before him that he can never quite attain he has gone upon a pilgrimage that will last him his life long because there is no end to it short of perfection he will better upon himself a little day by day or even if he has given up the attempt he will always remember that once upon a time he conceived this high ideal that once upon a time he had fallen in love with a star tis better to have loved and lost although the moon should have nothing to say to endymion although he should settle down with audrey and feed pigs do you not think he would move with a better grace and cherish higher thoughts to the end the louts he meets at church never had a fancy above audrey's snood but there is a reminiscence in endymion's heart that like a spice keeps it fresh and haughty to be even one of the outskirters of art leaves a fine stamp on a man's countenance i remember once dining with a party in the inn at chateau landon most of them were unmistakable bagmen others well-to-do peasantry but there was one young fellow in a blouse whose face stood out from among the rest surprisingly it looked more finished more of the spirit looked out through it it had a living expressive air and you could see that his eyes took things in my companion and i wondered greatly who and what he could be it was fair time in chateau landon and when we went along the booths we had our questions answered for there was our friend busily fiddling for the peasants to caper to he was a wandering violinist a troop of strollers once came to the inn where i was staying in the department of sign et marne there was a father and a mother two daughters brazen blowsy hussies who sang and acted without an idea of how to set about either and a dark young man like a tutor a recalcitrant house painter who sang and acted not amiss the mother was the genius of the party so far as genius can be spoken of with regard to such a pack of incompetent humbugs and her husband could not find the words to express his admiration for her comic countrymen you should see my old woman said he and nodded his beery countenance one night they performed in the stable-yard with flaring lamps a wretched exhibition coldly looked upon by a village audience next night as soon as the lamps were lighted there came a plump of rain and they had to sweep away their baggage as fast as possible and make off to the barn where they harbored cold wet and supperless in the morning a dear friend of mine who has as warm a heart for strollers as i have myself made a little collection and sent it by my hands to comfort them for their disappointment i gave it to the father he thanked me cordially and we drank a cup together in the kitchen talking of roads and audiences and hard times when i was going up got my old stroller and off with his hat i am afraid said he that monsieur will think me altogether a beggar but i have another demand to make upon him i began to hate him on the spot we play again to-night he went on of course i shall refuse to accept any more money from monsieur and his friends who have already been so liberal but our programme of to-night is something truly creditable and i cling to the idea that monsieur will honour us with his presence and then with a shrug and a smile monsieur understands the vanity of an artist save the mark 
the vanity of an artist that is the kind of thing that reconciles me to life a ragged tippling incompetent old rogue with the manners of a gentleman and the vanity of an artist to keep up his self-respect but the man after my own heart is monsieur de valversin it is nearly two years since i saw him first and indeed i hope i may see him often again here is his first programme as i found it on the breakfast-table and have kept it ever since as a relic of bright days mesdames et messieurs mademoiselle ferrario et monsieur de vervoussin auront le honneur de chanter ce soir les morceaux suivants mademoiselle ferrario chantera mignon voici le j france de François dormez là, le château bleu, où voulez-vous aller? Monsieur de Valversine, Madame Fontaine et Monsieur Robinet, les plongeurs à cheval, les maris mécontents, tais toi gaiement, mon voisin l'original, hurrou comme ça, comme on est trompé. They made a stage at one end of the salle à manger, and what a sight it was to see Monsieur de Valversine with a cigarette in his mouth, twanging a guitar, and following Mademoiselle Ferrario's eyes with the obedient, kindly look of a dog. The entertainment wound up with a tombola, or auction of lottery tickets, an admirable amusement with all the excitement of gambling, and no hope of gain to make you ashamed of your eagerness, for there all is loss you make haste to be out of pocket it is a competition who shall lose most money for the benefit of monsieur de valversine and mademoiselle ferrario monsieur de valversine is a small man with a great head of black hair a vivacious and engaging air and a smile that would be delightful if he had better teeth he was once an actor in the chatelet but he contracted a nervous affection from the heat and glare of the footlights which unfitted him for the stage at this crisis mademoiselle ferrario otherwise mademoiselle rita of the alcazar agreed to share his wandering fortunes i could never forget the generosity of that lady said he he wears trousers so tight that it has long been a problem to all who knew him how he manages to get in and out of them he sketches a little in water-colours he writes verses he is the most patient of fishermen and spent long days at the bottom of the inn garden fruitlessly dabbling a line in the clear river you should hear him recounting his experiences over a bottle of wine such a pleasant vein of talk as he has with a ready smile at his own mishaps and every now and then a sudden gravity like a man who should hear the surf roar while he was telling the perils of the deep for it was no longer ago than last night perhaps that the receipts only amounted to a franc and a half to cover three francs of railway fare and two of board and lodging the mayor a man worth a million of money sat in the front seat repeatedly applauding mademoiselle ferrario and yet gave no more than three sous the whole evening local authorities look with such an evil eye upon the strolling artist alas i know it well who have been myself taken for one and pitilessly incarcerated on the strength of the misapprehension once monsieur de valversine visited a commissary of police for permission to sing the commissary who was smoking at his ease politely doffed his hat upon the singer's entrance mr commissary he began i am an artist and on went the commissary's hat again no courtesy for the companions of apollo they are as degraded as that said monsieur de valversine with a sweep of his cigarette but what pleased me most was one outbreak of his when we had been talking all the evening of the rubs indignities and pinchings of his wandering life some one said it would be better to have a million of money down and mademoiselle ferrario admitted that she would prefer that mightily eh bien mon nom not i cried de valversine striking the table with his hand if any one is a failure in the world is it not i i had an art in which i have done things well as well as some better perhaps than others and now it is closed against me i must go about the country gathering coppers and singing nonsense do you think i regret my life do you think i would rather be a fat burgess like a calf not i i have had moments when i have been applauded on the boards i think nothing of that but i have known in my own mind sometimes when i had not a clap from the whole house that i had found a true intonation or an exact 
and speaking gesture and then messieurs i have known what pleasure was what it was to do a thing well what it was to be an artist and to know what art is is to have an interest for ever such as no burgess can find in his petty concerns tenez messieurs je vais vous le dire it is like a religion such making some allowance for the tricks of memory and the inaccuracies of translation was the profession of faith of monsieur de valversine i have given him his own name lest any other wanderer should come across him with his guitar and cigarette and mademoiselle ferrario for should not all the world delight to honor this unfortunate and loyal follower of the muses may apollo send him rhymes hitherto undreamed of may the river be no longer scanty of her silver fishes to his lure may the cold not pinch him on long winter rides nor the village jack in office affront him with unseemly manners and may he never miss mademoiselle ferrario from his side to follow with his dutiful eyes and accompany on the guitar the marionettes made a very dismal entertainment they performed a piece called pyramus and thisbe in five mortal acts and all written in alexandrines fully as long as the performers one marionette was the king another the wicked counsellor a third credited with exceptional beauty represented thisbe and then there were guards and obdurate fathers and walking gentlemen nothing particular took place during the two or three acts that i set out but you will be pleased to learn that the unities were properly respected and the whole piece with one exception moved in harmony with classical rules that exception was the comic countryman a lean marionette in wooden shoes who spoke in prose and in a broad patois much appreciated by the audience he took unconstitutional liberties with the person of his sovereign kicked his fellow marionettes in the mouth with his wooden shoes and whenever none of the versifying suitors were about made love to thisbe on his own account in comic prose this fellow's evolutions and the little prologue in which the showman made a humorous elogium of his troop praising their indifference to applause and hisses and their single devotion to their art were the only circumstances in the whole affair that you could fancy would so much as raise a smile but the villagers of Presse seemed delighted indeed so long as a thing is an exhibition and you pay to see it it is nearly certain to amuse if we were charged so much ahead for sunsets or if god sent round a drum before the hawthorns came in flower what a work should we not make about their beauty but these things like good companions stupid people early cease to observe and the abstract bagman titups passed in his spring gig and is positively not aware of the flowers along the lane or the scenery of the weather overhead End of section twenty two